Good evening and welcome to the Council at Large debate here in the City of Champions. My name is Mark Lindy and I'm the General Manager of Brockton Community Access. Uh, we're producing this as a public service to the community to educate people about the candidates. Uh, with me this evening is uh, uh, my good friend and uh, co-host uh, of this debate, Ron Van Dam, WXBR Radio, the two organizations are partnering to put this public service on. You'll be able to see this on both Brockton Community Access and also on listen to it on WXBR. So we're gonna start right away, uh, first off, with opening statements. Uh, the person that picked the lucky number one is uh, Ed Miller. You have a minute. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who's gonna watch us inviting me into your living room. Uh, I have gone canvassing, and if you've seen me at the door, uh, my message is the same. We have to start with A. I say we have to start with A, then B, then C. A is finally hiring a city planner and getting a planning board together, where their job is to get businesses here in our city. We have plenty of places for them to go. We just need someone to have that as their responsibility. And not just any businesses, but businesses that pay, pay a livable wage. When we have livable wages, people can save money and start buying some of the houses that have been foreclosed on that we have in all our neighborhoods. We do that, we increase the revenue. When you increase the revenue, then we can start hiring the fire department, the police department, and start having the after school specials that we desperately need to keep our kids busy. I'd like to thank you for having me here tonight. Um, you'll be answering the questions, and I'm hoping that you will hire me as your next counselor. Okay. Reset. Uh, number two is uh, Robert Sullivan. Thank you, Mark, and uh, thank you, Ron. Uh, my name is Robert Sullivan. I stand here before you proudly as one of your counselors at large, having served in that capacity since 2006. I served as a council president in 2008. Lifelong Brocktonian, married a Brockton gal, and we're raising our three children here in the City of Champions. This election is about not just the president of the, of the City of Brockton, but the future. And we need to elect experienced, proven leadership to guide during tough economic times. I think you need to look at some of my uh, past practices and some of the benefits that I've done as a productive member of the City Council. My name is Robert Sullivan, and what I, I stand before you today is to ask for your consideration and your vote. There is two open council at large seats, and uh, I hope to be reelected on September 17th. Again, I'll be number seven on the ballot. My name is Robert Sullivan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up would be Nicholas Fernandez. Uh, thank you, Ron, and thank you, Mark, for having me. My name is Nicholas Fernandez, and I'm running for a city council at large here in Brockton. I'm a lifelong resident of the community of Brockton. I'm a product of the Brockton Public Schools and also of the U University of Massachusetts Amherst. And I have two years of experience of working in a nonprofit um, called City Year, where we focus primarily on helping low-performing schools rise to the, to the mark of success and also helping with the children and helping them succeed to, to find their dreams. And that's what I want to bring to the city of Brockton. I want to bring a, a stronger and more intense focus on our youth because at the end, they're the future of our city. And I would like to see our downtown area improved and also bring a more friendly approach to citizens and residents to City Hall. And I'm looking for you, one of your four votes on September 17th. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next would be Paul Beckner. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Paul Beckner, yada, yada, yada. Brockton is not at a crossroads, folks. We are hanging off a cliff. So I've decided to add a couple of new words to your vocabulary. Bohica. Google it. Then you can explain it to your kids. Bohica is, a, is an American acronym. People who practice Bohica, we call Bohicans. An example of a Bohican is someone who votes to raise your taxes unnecessarily, and in the next breath, hands out pay raises to highly paid officials. A Bohican then looks you in the eyes and tells you that it was best for you. Don't let Bohica happen again. Maybe this time we will see the last of the Bohicans as counselors at large. I may be called a lot of things, but you'll never call me a Bohican. Thank you, Paul. Okay, next up would be uh, Steve Foote. Hello, and uh, 
My name is Steve Foote. A lot of you may recognize me from the TV show, Democratically Speaking, and also as the chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. What you may not know about me is I'm a 54-year resident of Brookfield section of Brockton. I'm a homeowner. I've gone to all the Brockton public schools from the Brookfield School the day it opened all the way through Massasoit Community College. I also have a degree from Northeastern University. And I'm, unlike most of the people in this forum tonight, I have uh, suspended my full-time job. I will be working for you uh, exclusively if I'm elected as a city councilor. And I'm looking forward to being your next city councilor. I've done all the homework necessary. I've uh, done everything that's uh, needed to be done as far as studying all the issues. And hopefully we'll get to a lot of the issues tonight. So I hope you'll consider me. I'm number 13 on the ballot, Steve Foote, for our Councilor at Lodge. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, next would be uh, Jim Daly. Good evening. Uh, I'm James Daly. I am interested in getting your vote on Tuesday, September 17th. Some of the issues I see coming before us, uh, major issues are finance, safety, infrastructure, and confidence. Something a lot of people do not have in this city is confidence. We have to bring back that confidence. People will feel safer in this city if we improve our safety, if we're, our finances are there. We can build a good city, attract businesses. Attracting businesses gets jobs. Jobs gets people into good homes that they can afford. Brockton is an affordable community. I'd like to see it stay that way. And I hope on Tuesday, September 17th, to have your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, next up is uh, Patrick Quinn. Go ahead. Ready. Hello and good evening. My name is Patrick Quinn and I'm running to be your city councilor. On election day, I need your vote as much as you need to vote for me. The issues have not gone away since I first ran for office in 2007. The blooded downtown, dilapidated property, education, public spaces, pension and health insurance, drugs and youth, city commerce and public safety. My heart truly goes out to those families that have recently suffered. All of this, like a tightly spun web, leads to the economics of our city. It is time we start solving these issues with proven policies. I have the tenacity and the knowledge to do this, and together we can accomplish excellence, provided we give me the authority in the form of your vote on election day. I'm Patrick Quinn, and together we will make this, th this city better. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Um, let me make sure where I'm at. Uh, Patrick, number eight, number nine would be Jacob Tagger. Hello, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Mark and Ron for having me here. My name is Jacob L. Tagger, Jr. I'm also running for council at large. As a lifelong resident of this city, my heart belongs to Brockton. My friends, my family, and my life are here. From the playgrounds of Richmond Street, where I grew up, to the halls of Brockton High School, I have enjoyed the many wonderful people and experiences that come from living in such a diverse community. I have had the pleasure to share the happy moments of so many friends and families in this community, but I have also seen the faces of the parents who have lost their children. As a city, we face many issues. None are greater than the fear that we cannot do anything. I believe that the resilient spirit of our community is at the very heart of what makes this a great city. I believe that by working together, we can make this the kind of city that we are all proud to call home. My name is Jacob L. Tagger, Jr. I am running for council at large. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Next up is uh, Craig Pina. I'd like to thank uh, Mark and Ron, uh, WXBR and uh, BCA for having this, this forum tonight. Uh, my name's Craig Pina. I'm running for Councilor at Large. I've been a 42-year resident of Brockton. I've, I've chosen to uh, raise my family here. And over the last two decades, I, do, I doubt that there's anyone that, that can say they've worked harder for the, the youth of the city and for the business community of the city. Uh, through, through my work with various organizations and uh, the Chamber of Commerce, I, 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 I know what's at the heart of the city. I know what's at, what's at the heart of some of our problems. Uh, one of the problems is we need to open our city for business to grow our commercial tax base. We need to change some of the business practices in some of our departments and commissions in the city. Uh, to get everybody pulling in the same direction. We also need to increase our public safety. We need, we need to increase our police and fire and give them every tool they need. Uh, my name is Craig Pina. I'm number one on the ballot. I hope I ask for your vote on September 17th. Thank you, Craig. Um, next up would be Gary Keith, Sr. 
Hello, my name is Gary Keith. I'm running for city council at large. I want to thank Mark and Ron for giving me this opportunity to be here tonight. But most of all, I want to thank God for the opportunity to run uh, as a city councilman for this great city of Brockton. I am a uh, U.S. I am a U.S. veteran of the Army. I am married with uh, seven kids and a 25-year resident of the city of Brockton. Right now, basically, I serve at uh, Jubilee Church in Boston. I have the uh, endorsement of the leadership of my church uh, to run this city and to uh, be one of the councilmen here. Basically, I bring a passion of trying to make everything work here, bringing safety to the streets, and I have a plan to do that. Hopefully, it works, um, with the, and I look forward to working with the city council members that we already have here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Shana Barnes. Good evening. My name is Shana Barnes. First, I'd like to say thank you to our host, thank you to the studio for having this debate. I am a 33-year uh, resident of the city of Brockton, and I um, am currently running for council at large seat. I am number three on the ballot. September 17th is when you go to the polls. I have the experience, I have the knowledge, I have the resources in order to help turn the city around. I think that we are currently on somewhat of the right track, but I do think that they need a fresh and a new perspective to some of the, the issues that we are facing here. And I think that I would be able to bring that fresh new perspective. Um, I am quite honestly the most diverse candidate that you have here. Um, the city is changing, it is becoming more and more diverse. Um, with the redistricting, we have become a majority minority city. And I feel that I would be able to represent everyone in the city appropriately, effectively, and successfully. Thank you, my name is Shana Barnes, number three on your ballot. Thank you, Shana. Um, next up is Don Carr. Thank you. My name is Don Carr, your candidate for city council at large and former radio personality at AM 1460, WXPR. I've been living and working in Brockton for the past 20 years, and during that time, I've been helping people, volunteering on the school level, the city level. My greatest strength is that I'm a problem solver. I'm a facilitator. I help people with their problems. I solve them. And as your next city councilor, I will also bring that strength to the council. You need a street light? I'll get you a street light. You want your pothole filled? I'll fill it. I mean, that's just, it's just the way I am. Um, I, I strive to make this world a better place. I love this city. That's why I'm running for council. I want to make it better for you and I. And uh, I'm number 11 on the ballot, September 17th. Thank you. Thank you, Don. And uh, last but certainly not least is uh, Jay Stewart. <coughs> Uh, great, thanks to uh, BCA and WXPR. Uh, I often say that um, for a public official, your best resume is your life experience. Um, I grew up in the housing projects on the south side of Dallas. Uh, my parents had very high expectations. My younger brother and I both made it uh, from Dallas to Boston. I arrived when I was 18, studied at Boston University and MIT. Uh, later moved to Brockton when I adopted my son. I was in my 20s, he was seven. Uh, I bought a home here, started a business here, um, got very vested in the community uh, because everything that I own and love uh, was in Brockton. I've been here for uh, 14 years. My son is now uh, 22, uh, serving uh, in the military in Japan. Uh, and I believe that that life experience is what I've always brought to my decisions as a city councilor. Look forward to speaking more. Uh, about uh, my record and uh, the decisions I've made uh, on behalf of you. Uh, Jay Stewart, City Councilor at Large, seeking re-election. Thank you. Thank you. And I guess I messed up the order already, but that's okay. Uh, Anthony Donegan. Thank you. Did not mean to skip you. I oh, apologize. That's okay. No problem. Thank you. Yes, my name is Anthony Donegan. Hello, everyone. I am running for City Councilor at Large. Uh, some of you may know me. I am the Ward 3 School Committee person now. I think that I'm quite qualified to move into the city council at large position. Uh, I think you've heard all of us speak to issues of public safety, finances, planning, and, and the way government runs in Brockton. Clearly those are issues that we all need to, to fight with. I think that I'm, uh, should be one of your four votes. I think that I'm in the best position to move those issues forward. I'll work with people. I have experience. I've, put together two budgets on the school committee. 
I've hired a superintendent, and I would like to be your counselor at large, and I hope that you will give me your vote on September 17th. I am last but not least on your, on your ballot. Thank you. Thank you, and I do apologize to you sincerely for messing up the order. I, I was going to do it sooner or later, so I might as well start early. I apologize. Do better on closing. Um, I do want to let the viewers know that all candidates for counselor at large were invited, and uh, Moses Rodriguez, who is the 15th candidate, is out of town. So he wasn't able to participate, although I'm sure he absolutely would have had he been here. Um, so we're going to start off with the questions, and uh, Ron is going to... Uh, Ask the first question. The date that we're uh, taping this uh, debate, uh, obviously the greatest concern is public safety and the upsurge in crime. Now, as a counselor at large, what can you specifically do in that position to affect the change? Okay, and first up on this one is Don Carr. Um, to de well, we had a crime, uh, crime uh, public safety meeting last Thursday, and at the meeting beforehand, I printed up, um, I had spoken to Officer Bill Healy, the public safety officer for the city of Brockton, and I printed up in five different languages um, a tip line and all the information so that people could, um, uh, they could report crime in their neighborhood and what we need to do, sorry, lost my place, is um, we need to tell people and show people that they can participate. We all live in this community together. We need to take care of each other. We need to make it a better place by um, reporting crime in our neighborhoods, by bringing in more public safety, by bringing in more police officers and firefighters and whatnot. We can uh, help abolish crime. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next would be uh, Anthony Donigan. Same, same question? Yes, same question. Everybody gets the same question. Thank you. With respect to public safety then, I uh, did attend that meeting as well, and I asked of uh, Chief Gomes and also of Assistant District Attorney Cruz a couple of questions. I think in the short term, what I'd like to see to begin with, it wouldn't cost any, well, it would cost some money, but what I, I think we've, we've talked many times in the past of opening more neighborhood precincts. I really think that this is important because I think that the police need to get to know the residents better. I think that there has to be that level of trust between the residents. Uh, I think that also we need more outreach to the youth of the city. Uh, we need to build the trust between the city and the kids that, that are growing up here. That's something, again, that I worked for on the school committee and I'll continue to work for in the city. Uh, long term, I would like to see a, a, a a justice center built in the city um, that would house state police, the district attorney's office, and the local police. Uh, and I will work with, with state and federal government to try to make that happen. Thank you. Okay, next would be Craig Pina. Thank you. With, re with regard to public safety, uh, there, there are a few issues at, at, at hand here. What we need to do is increase our outreach to the, to the community. And uh, in order to do that, we need to increase actual feet on the streets. Uh, what what, what pe most people don't realize is the city has been down $10 million in local aid for the last five years. That $10 million could equal 60 new police officers. Uh, we need more police officers. We need to put pressure on our state delegation and on Beacon Hill to restore local aid levels. Uh, we, we recently had a new tax increase. State revenues are up higher than expected. We need to increase local aid. We need to put more feet on the streets and we need to find a way to give the police the tool that they, tools that they need. Thank you. Um, next would be Paul Beckner. With respects to uh, <clears throat> public safety, I don't think it's any big secret that we need more policemen on the street. That's not the solution. That's one of the answers. Uh, we're about 80 policemen shy. Um, I think having a two-way main street is one of our priorities. Having three to four policemen at the intersections uh, directing traffic will create a, pr a police presence there. Um, but more than anything else, and I know it's been beat to death, is education. I think education begins in the household, begins with the family. And we've got to have more interaction amongst all the, uh, the smaller communities within our larger community and bring everybody together as one. That's the only thing that's going to work as well as more police presence and uh, <clears throat> and uh, being seen. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. 
Um, next is Ed Miller. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, pretty much we all pretty much will say the same thing. We do need more police officers on the, but we need them on the beat. We also need our ward counselors working with the uh, council at large to have more public safety meetings where more people can go and we can meet our neighbors. You can walk down the street nowadays and maybe not you know half your neighbors. But when we know each other, we become a family. When we become a family, we look out for each other. We can't stop every crime. Unfortunately, two great people, more than two great people, lost their lives in the last week. Most of it was just a, a, an act of passion or an act that wasn't planned. That's why we need to keep down as much crime as we can and watch out for all of us. We watch out for our neighbors, we protect ourselves. We also have more police on the street and they'll be there for us. That's why we have the uh, tip line. You see something, give them a call. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Um, next would be Patrick Quinn. Okay, so uh, the question was crime in the city. And uh, it's tough to really answer this in one, in one minute. But, um, but yeah, we need more police officers. We need to continue any of the policies that we have right now. But more importantly is that, and I've been saying this for a few years now, is that we need to institute the broken windows theory in the city of Brockton. We should ask ourselves, why in the city of Brockton is there so much crime happening? Why are people killing each other? Yes, there's the national issues of, of the economy, but there's also the local issues here too. And yes, broken windows attract people who like broken windows. It's a proven theory. They proved it in Lowell, they proved it in Boston, they proved it in New York City with Giuliani, and that's the type of thing we have to do here. We have to get code enforcement and start making our city look like we want quality people. If we have a city that looks d dilapidated and shabby, we're gonna track that, and that increases crime, period. And so the broken windows theory is what we have to institute, and we can, we can do this because other cities have done this and proven it. So that's what I would do, is I would definitely clearly support a broken windows initiative throughout the entire city. Thank you. Uh, next would be Steve Foote. Well, what I don't want to do with regards to public safety is micromanage the police department from the city council seat. Uh, I think uh, Manny Gomes does a fine job as our police chief, but what we can do as city councilors is provide him with the tools that's necessary to fight crime in the streets. Now, the main thing we could really do is is uh, raise, uh, uh, increase the revenue in the city. And by doing that, it does not mean raising tax rates on businesses and homeowners. What it means is bringing in new business into the city and raising, the, and get, raising more revenue overall by bringing in more and more businesses. The other thing that's necessary is we need to have that public safety building. Mr. Stewart at times has talked about um, eminent domain. The, play, the parcel on Pleasant Street is screaming for eminent domain for a police uh, building. And uh, the other, one other thing is that we could uh, bring in a movie theater and a Dave and Buster's to the mall to give the youth some place to go, something to do, and some very valuable jobs. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jacob Tagger, next. All right. Speaking about public safety, uh, again, every counselor or candidate that's here is going to say, the same thing, we know we all need more police. We have to find ways to get more police. But right now we have to be practical about what we can actually do right now when we leave this building today. Uh, we definitely have to work with the police to get more police on the beat, on the streets, visible so people that are committing these crimes know that at least there is a police presence, that we're not going to tolerate it. Uh, we can't stop every crime, but we can try our, our hardest to deter it, and that's, you know, police on the streets. Also, we need to really push this public awareness uh, tip line. Uh, we all have cell phones and iPads. We need to email, text. We need to help the police. They have a tough enough job being undermanned. We need to work with them. We need to open our mouths as a community. Together is the only way we're going to do this. It's an issue that affects us all. We need to do our part. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next would be Robert Sullivan. 
As a counselor at large, you're the legislative branch. Uh, you appropriate funds. And just last night, I, I voted to appropriate $315,000 for a public safety initiative grant uh, that's going to benefit the city of Brockton. I've done eight budgets of over $350 million, hired new police officers, made sure that the votes were there to uh, have police cruisers. Uh, but I also think we need to look at educating the youth and having a collaborative approach with public safety and the schools. Uh, one of the things that I'm proud of, we have a nice presence at the Brockton Public High School uh, where we have a police presence up there. It's a benefit. Uh, but we also need to look at uh, the drug epidemic because drugs and crime go parallel. And it's not just illegal drugs where I filed a resolve about rolling papers. You don't sell rolling papers. Uh, but also the legal drugs, prescription, opiate addiction. It's really creating death in the city of Brockton and crime and we need to combat that. And as an elected official, those are the things you can do. And I have done that proudly. And I hope to continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next would be Nicholas Fernandez. I think the issue of public safety in Brockton has a lot to do with community. Um, we can't really bolster the budget for the police officers at this moment, but I think what we need to do as a community is, is join hands and, and, and really um, come together. And I think one way of doing that is to go beyond the step of having neighborhood crime watches, but having neighborhood associations that will do the crime watches, but will also serve the needs of that neighborhood. And, and that way we can start to generate the community feeling that has been absent in the city. Um, and I think city councilors can do a large part in organizing that and spreading the word and, and bringing people together in these type of meetings. And I think we need to reach out to our youth because at that age they're very impressionable and no one wants to turn to a life of crime for the sake of that, but it's because it's an outlet that they see sort of a, a support system. And we need to show them that there's a stronger support system on the side of good in Brockton. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next would be Jay Stewart. Uh, thank you. So I think there are uh, four things that I'd like to discuss briefly. Certainly the school at, at the high school is important. We have a pretty amazing innovative strategy of alternative schools. So kids who are not um, successful at the traditional high school they're, they don't leave the high school and hit the streets, but they're able to find alternative paths. The city has spent a lot of money and time to ensure that those programs exist, and I think that's the, one of the best preventative ways to make sure that young people are not on the streets or in, are in a constructive setting. I was the only city councilor in the last budget cycle that voted against um, removing $100,000 of funding from the city side uh, to the school system because I think that initial funding um, at that level is very important. Um, we put more money as, as a city council into playgrounds and parks because I think if you give folks a, a safe place and an inviting place to go, kids will be attracted there and keep themselves occupied in a positive way. Also as a city councilor, we've funded and put in, into place uh, the beginnings of a planning department, uh, which uh, obviously was a big investment uh, and an important drive to ensure that uh, there's more safety on the street. Time. Um, next we have uh, Jim Daly. Uh, public safety is really uh, our number one issue. Uh, there's no doubt everybody will agree we need more police. The police that we currently have are doing the job in conjunction with the state police. They're arresting criminals. They're sending them to the courts. Unfortunately, there was uh, a person in, in the state uh, lab that uh, abused their position and it's costing the citizens by criminals not being prosecuted, by being put in the street. We need better supervision. We need courts that are going to sentence people who commit violent crimes to long terms. We need police on the street uh, interacting with the community in a, set, in a setting that's non-threatening. Let's get the people so that, that when they see a, a police officer on the street that they're not thinking a crime's happened, that hey, here's somebody we can talk to. Let, let's get some kind of interaction between the citizens and the police in a positive manner. Thank you. Next would be Shana. Mm -hmm. okay. um, it's difficult with so many candidates to have any Brand, brand spanking new ideas, but um, like the other candidates here, I do support uh, more police on the street, more qualified police on the street with diversity training, with sensitivity training, and also their tactical training. Um, I also support the idea of the public safety building. I know that uh, police, police chief um, Gomes and uh, Condon, prior to him, 
they came to Congressman Stephen Lynch's office to talk with him about how they can get some federal monies to get that building together, along with uh, former Chief Galligan and Francis and DA T uh, Tim Cruz, in order to get that centralized in the city to um, maybe alleviate some of what my uh, competitor's statement was about the broken windows, to get that building on Pleasant Street to be a, a, a gem um, for people to look at and to see that we care about our city and that we care about public safety. We care about our safety as residents. We also need to um, increase our um, uh, the beat patrols and we need to increase the crime watch. Thank you. Thank you. Gary Keith, same question. Well, everyone knows that we, um, we do need more police officers. But right now, I, I actually will uh, support any new initiatives that we could use to actually um, bridge the gap between parents and the police department so we can have more communication between them and uh, accountability by all parties. I also believe that we should have more training in things that would uh, boost the morale of some of our youth, okay, which is um, basically giving them some job training and some, uh, because their morale is low. And that's where a lot of our crime is. But I also think that we should have a new initiative which wouldn't cost as much money as putting police officers on right at this time, but using what Boston used years ago, which is uh, special police officers that can go into the neighborhoods right now and eventually we can transfer them further and put them into the uh, academy under the Boston, Brockton Police Department once uh, a spot comes available. So I think that that actually could be a sort of a quick fix answer. Thank you. Um, next question up, uh, Ron's going to tackle that as well. Next question, what is your position on the proposed power plant in Brockton and why? Okay, first up on this one is Jay Stewart. Great. Can I go back to that previous question briefly? So I had four areas. One area was uh, I do obviously support the police department and have always funded the police department um, uh, to the level that they re requested uh, with smart strategies. In terms of uh, the power plant, as you probably know, I was the first elected official or public official to oppose that power plant. Uh, it's just not the right technology uh, for that area of the city, which is densely populated. Uh, I'm not opposed to, you know, generating power, but I also believe that uh, those um, industries need to be correctly cited, and it isn't cited. Uh, as you may also know, I'm being, uh, the city council is being sued, but I'm also being sued personally uh, by the power plant uh, proponents for getting in the way of this development. So we'll continue to uh, oppose it. I've voted for every single appropriation to ensure that the law department has the funds it needs to continue to fight uh, this battle. Thank you. Uh, next would be Gary Keith. <clears throat> As far as the opposition of the power plant goes, I actually oppose it. Um, the reason being is that I don't believe there's been enough research on it to risk public safety. Okay, as far as um, bringing in new revenue or whatever, it hasn't been proven yet and no one has actually um, proven that fact of how many jobs it's going to create or anything else. So I err on the side of caution and I look at it right now to where the people of Brockton have spoken, they're against the power plant and so am I. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next would be Nicholas Fernandez. Um, with the issue of the power plant, I'm definitely against it. Um, I've done a little bit of research into the power plant, I've, and I've seen that there are alternative energy sources that Siemens, the, the <clears throat> Siemens technologies actually provide that will provide the same amount of energy without the pollution and, and the, um, the global, global warming drawbacks. But also, I, I read into the, to the plan that was submitted to the Environmental Agency of Massachusetts and saw that not, not a great amount of the jobs that they said they're going to provide are going to go to Brockton residents. Um, so I'm definitely dead set against it and would be for more alternative and actually green, clean energy as opposed to um, gas-fired power plant. Thank you. Uh, next up, Shana Barnes. Um, I too uh, am against the power plant. I don't think 
that risking the residents, the uh, children, the businesses in that area is worth um, what we could potentially bring in. Um, I'm not against tax revenue, however, and I'm also not against jobs uh, with the unions, but I do think that we can work together with those other um, agencies and those organizations to make sure that whatever we fall back on for losing the power plant that we can gain in other areas um, with infrastructure, with some construction, um, and gaining uh, jobs and um, income that way. I think that the um, the information that's been put out um, so far, it, it's extremely concerning to me um, because there's no guarantee that the people there, that the children there will be safe, and it's just not worth it. Thank you. Thank you, Shana. Uh, next up is uh, Jim Daly. Um, as far as the power plant, um, I'm not opposed to building a power plant. I don't believe it belongs in a city as densely packed as Brockton. I don't know that it is as bad as everyone is saying it is. I do know there is a growing amount of our citizens that are for the power plant. Maybe not for the right reasons, but we have to represent all the people. We have to listen to both sides. I can't guarantee that I would vote for or against it. Okay, thank you. Uh, next would be uh, Robert Sullivan. Well, gentlemen, you know uh, that my unwavering opposition to the power plant, it's not the right technology. Um, green technology is the wave of the future. Harness the sun, harness the wind. This is a dinosaur. It's not the right technology. It's not the right location. And you don't put a price tag on health and safety. Um, I'm a husband, uh, but more importantly, a father of three children, young children. And I fear for uh, their health. Uh, right now, that core of the city down there in Ward 4, proudly represented by Council Stadinsky, uh, has a high uh, number of asthma uh, throughout the Commonwealth. That's a high percentage. I filed a resolve. It's going to be heard in two weeks. I want to know why the air quality monitoring test at the Gilmore School, the installation hasn't happened. It's been delayed all summer long. I oppose it. It's not the right technology. And win or lose, I'm going to oppose it because it's not right for Brockton and the citizens that I serve. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next would be uh, Craig Pina. In regards to the power plant, uh, we have to realize that we are in a financial crisis in the city right now, and we will be in the future. We need to open the city for business, uh, and that means negotiating with the power plant for the best possible deal for the city. Any science that I've seen and, and that I've researched is suspect at best as far as the negative effects of, of pollution from a power plant. What we need to do is, is, is open the city for business through host city fees and property taxes. We, we, can, we can negotiate the best deal in the, that we can possibly negotiate for the city. There are no other towns that have had a problem with power plants sited in their city from the town of Weymouth to Dighton to Braintree to the city of Boston in the Longwood medical area. There are no problems in, 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 in areas where power, similar power plants are, are located. It's clean technology, it's safe technology, and we need it. Thank you. Uh, next would be Paul Beckner. In regards to the power plant, I hope to save a little bit of time here. Um, regardless of the health hazards, which we were all aware of, and some people say they're not there, some people say there are, that they are, um, I want to know. What's it going to do for you? What's it going to do for you? What's it going to do for you? How is it going to save on your electric bill? How is it going to put money in your pocket? What benefits are there for the average individual in this city, or business owners for that matter? I don't see any. I don't hear any negotiating going on, and that's that. I'm against it. Okay, thank you. Um, next would be Ed Miller. And uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I've come out against the power plant. I'll always be against the power plant. Uh, people mention other cities, other towns that have it. The problem with Brockton is we're a large community of 100,000 people living in a very small area. When you use Weymouth, when you use uh, uh, Braintree, they're much bigger communities. They can, they can put it in places where it won't be near, ex right on top of people as it would be in Ward 4. Uh, they have a lot of issues and a lot of pollution down in Ward 4. And I'll always support, I'll always look at what an environmentalist said, because what's their skin in the game? They just want to see uh, clean, clean uh, water, clean areas. And that's what we should be looking at. When I watch a business, and when I read the report of what the power plant people said about it, I felt that also cancer is not caused by cigarettes. They want to see the power plant built. They don't live in this area. The people who are going to run it will not live here. And we'll have a, it will not create the number of jobs that we need to help to increase what we need in revenue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Patrick Quinn. Uh, 
Um, in regards to the power plant, I think as a city councilor, the responsibility whenever any new business comes to town is to be rational. And when you look at the geographical location of where the power plant wants to be, it makes sense. The Agonquin gas line is there. Um, it's an industrial zoned area, but it's not 1950, it's not 1940. And that's old technology, whether anyone wants to say it or not. Um, we're in a 21st century now, and we should move forward to the 21st century. The city of Brockton years ago built the first and largest in New England, the solar array field, on a brown field into a bright field. And so I think the city needs to move forward in being a green city. There's no question about it. There's more benefits from being a green city than actually still trying to lack on to oil and petroleum when, in, when we're all gone, chances are we're going to be using different types of energy to create our, our needs for our homes. So for me, I'm definitely against the power plant. There's absolutely no uh, upside economically or socially or environmentally for the city of Brockton in this type of uh, business coming to the city. Thank you. Uh, Don Carr. Thank you. I am personally opposed to the power plant. I feel like it is archaic and we should be leaning towards renewable energy. Um, I don't want to see a 350-foot smokestack in my city, do you? I mean, I, I think it's ridiculous. Uh, Brockton's been the dumping ground for hazardous waste and chemicals in the soil for years and years and years. It's time for environmental justice. We don't need to be breathing any more pollutants in, especially when the, the benefits go to the state of Connecticut. So why should we breathe in everyone else's pollution and suffer while other people get the power for it? Thank you. Thank you, Don. Next would be Steve Foote. Every once in a while an issue comes down the pike that's so polarizing and divisive that it, it's nothing more than being put on the ballot for the people to decide. So far the city has paid a million dollars approximately to fight the power plant. Uh, I think it's only right that the citizens, when, it, when you have an issue that's so divisive and everyone's fighting over it, that uh, you should have the citizens have their say in the privacy of the voting booth where they're not influenced by outside influences, not worried about what this one's going to think of them or that one's going to think of them if they speak up. They can uh, do it in the privacy of the voting booth. That's what America's all about. I think it should be on the ballot for the people to vote on. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jacob Tagger. I actually want to make sure I'm pretty clear on this. Uh, the power plan I'm firmly against. I would, I want the corporation behind uh, that's backing the power plant to understand that they need to do everything possible to make sure I don't get elected because I will fight. I don't care if we have to spend another million dollars. When we're dealing with people's lives, it's not a business. We're dealing with residents. We have schools over there. We have children there. There's nowhere in this city that I would ever agree to have that power plant. I will not put anyone's lives in jeopardy. I wouldn't put my family's lives in jeopardy. I would put no one, I would put no one here's lives in jeopardy or their families or anybody that's watching this right now. So I wanna make sure my stance is clear. I will never be for the power plant. I commend the current council for fighting it. And when I do get elected, I will continue to fight it. At the end of the day, this is about people's lives. It's not about a greedy corporation that won't even do the quality testing to back up what they, they're trying to, the bull they're trying to put on us. I will never be for the power plant. And uh, Anthony Donahue. Well, all of the, uh, the, the best answers have been given, but I'll, I'll throw my spin on it as well. I am against the power plant. Uh, several years ago, we built a, uh, or we made a contract with a water company to buy water, or buy the right to water that we don't need. Uh, this is, seems that it's a technology and a source of power that we do not need. Uh, I agree with my <clears throat> colleagues with respect to its, its archaic technology. The numbers that I have will be about five or six jobs uh, to man that, that facility. It doesn't require p many people at all to run. The jobs that would be created to build it would be go to any number of uh, areas, cities around, or towns around this area that are more remotely located from the population. I don't think that it should be in Brockton. Uh, so I, that's my stand on the issue. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for sticking to the time. I'm going to ask the next question, and uh, I'm going to state it as simply as I can. Uh, I'd like you to 
list your three top priorities if you get elected to be a city councilor at large. Unfortunately, with the time limits, you really can't explain them, but maybe you can save that for your opening statement. First up on that would be Steve Foot. My top three priorities, reduce the tax rate on the businesses and the homeowners, bring in new businesses, and try to take, do something with the crime rate here in Brockton. Uh, they all go together. New businesses will lower the tax rate for the homeowners and the businesses as well, because there'll be more of them paying into the total, at which point we can use that, those funds to hire the police, the new police officers that I think everybody here on the panel uh, wants to hire. Uh, we'll give uh, Chief Gomes the necessary tools to fight crime the way it needs to be fought, and it'll also give us the necessary uh, uh, funding to possibly build uh, the new police and fire station, which I think is desperately needed, and uh, that's my top three priorities. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next would be Jacob Tagger. My three points that I want to address are Public safety, public safety, public safety. As much as we can talk about the city planner, expanding the tax base, any other ideas, first and foremost, we need to make sure the city is safe. We were not going to bring in more businesses, more homeowners, new homeowners, people that want to raise their family in this city and open businesses until we make sure our city streets are safe. People's families need to be safe. People's businesses need to be safe. We cannot do anything until our city is safe. So again, I want to lower the tax burden. I want to bring in a city planner. I want to do all of these things, but we need to have public safety in Brockton. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next would be Anthony Donegan. Thank you. I'd like, obviously, public safety, and these are not necessarily in the order of priority because I think that they're all interspersed, but public safety, we need to raise revenues, uh, and we need to do that without increasing the burden on our citizens, and we need to br make Brockton a city where people want to come and live. Part of that is cer certainly we need more public safety, uh, but we also need very much to improve our image um, and, and to the extent that we can get help in that from outside forces, we need to solicit that help. Uh, we need to reach out to the, the wider area media-wise to get more, more uh, positive stories and images for Brockton. But again, revenue increasing, public safety increasing, and also, um, again, improving our, making Brockton a city that people want to come and live. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, Patrick Quinn. Um, well, the question was, what are the first three things you would do as a city councilor? Well, there's, there's a lot of things I'd want to do, but the first thing I would do, honestly, is I would submit an ordinance to try to rescind uh, a city ordinance called Section 2-92, which is the use of electronic devices. The city councils pass an ordinance to maintain decorum within the city council chambers, but doesn't allow city councilors to use computer devices unless the city clerk gave them one. So the city councilor, you're not right now able to use your computer and research things as debate happens. To me, that's a disenfranchising knowledge base in our community. That has to be rescinded immediately. The next thing is I would definitely move forward with broken windows, absolutely. Get rid of the unlawlessness of Rockton. In economics, there's what's called the rule of law. If you don't have the rule of law, your economics base goes down. The last thing is change the attitude of the city. Start saying we can and stop saying we can't. Thanks. Thank you, Patrick. Um, next up, Ed Miller. Thank you. Well, it all starts with revenue. We need to bring in the jobs. We need to bring in the businesses. Therefore, as I keep on saying, we need a city planner, someone to go out and get the jobs. As the revenue increases, the taxes go down for the rest of us. When we have more people making a livable wage and being able to buy the homes here in Brockton, we'll see the tax base go up. When we see the tax base go up, we can hire more police, more fire, and start after school programs. Uh, I talk to the chief police a, a lot. One of the things he says, he sees a lot of kids that get into trouble, and they're not bad kids. The kids that are just bored. So we need after school programs and find things that they're interested in. Let it be uh, sports 
or arts or science or math, keep them interested in, and they'll also learn things. But it all starts with the revenue. So let's get the city planner. That would be my number one, <clears throat> increase the revenue. I know I keep on repeating it, and I'm going to keep on repeating it. And when you vote for me, give me one of your four votes, and we'll get the revenue up there. Thank you. Okay, next would be um, Don Carr. Thank you. My three points, public safety, economic growth, and work at balancing the budget to avoid tax increases. Now, regarding public safety, it costs about a minimum of about $150,000 annually to bring one police officer onto the police force. If you work at balancing the budget and eliminating, you could take $150,000 from different parts of the budget, balance it, and look, you have one more cop on the street. Take another 150000 take 75, like, there was $100,000 cut from the school budget this year. The, the um, Education Reform Act of 1993 allows every city and municipality to eliminate that $100,000. That's almost 150000 there for one police officer. You just keep adding it up, stacking it up, and then you have more on the force. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Um, next would be Shana Barnes. Uh, number one would be um, trying to make sure that we work with the federal government and our state delegation to get that public safety building, to get the funding needed for that. There's, I think the current quote is about $900 million. So um, we would definitely have to work very, very hard to do that. And I think that would alleviate a lot of the other issues that are going on. Uh, number two, uh, last night at the city council meeting, um, as Councillor Sullivan said, they did appropriate some funds to um, the Registry of Deeds and to the BRA in order to hire a person, and I just off the cuff just called them an MLS coordinator, um, and that person would go and address, uh, to identify and to address some of the foreclosed homes and the homes that are dilapidated in our area um, and hold the property owners responsible and then in turn revitalizing them and flipping them and then selling them to uh, residents. I would definitely support that position in that um, proposition. Also, um, the city planner. Definitely we need a city planner um, and that would go to our economic growth and the revitalization of the community that way. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next will be Jim Daly. Three things, public safety, finances, infrastructure. Public safety is, as we've all said, we need uh, good police, more police. Uh, the public safety building would be great. The drug court to handle the cases more swiftly and to uh, get people into treatment and keep them out of trouble. Uh, budget, absolutely. We need to keep our budget on track. We have to use our money wisely. I, I, I think the city council pretty much has, has done that. Um, one of the discrepancies that I see goes to infrastructure. When I was on the school committee, I saw that we were put in for $16 million worth of capital improvements to the schools. We were given 150000 This is why we're always up against uh, emergencies when buildings need to be fixed because there's no plan. Under Mayor Harrington, there had been a study done I don't know if it was ever finished, to see the condition of all the buildings, the city side and the school side. We've been lucky that the state has been able to give us plenty of money to help with the schools. It doesn't work with the city. Sorry. Okay, uh, next would be Robert Sullivan. <clears throat> you know, it's a real honor to be a counselor at large, uh, to be a public servant for the city of Brockton. I, I think the three things would be turning around the economy, public safety, and without question, quality of life issues. Some of the things that I've done proven and production-wise in the city of Brockton is the streetlight acquisition. For two years, I was a champion banging the drum on that. The city of Brockton bought the streetlights from National Grid for 35000 This year alone, it was a savings of $650,000. It's going to be a reoccurring savings, more police on the streets, more firefighters, and more teachers in the classroom. Another thing that I'm proud to say is Chapter 40R, Smart Growth Zoning. Four years ago, I brought it to the council. It was supported. And it was signed in. It's a catalyst for investment when the economy turns around downtown Brockton, and we see this with the $300 million Trinity uh, financial uh, capital improvement program. So you need to be creative. You need to have fiscal uh, responsibility, cost containment. You have to be uh, thinking outside the box. I've done that. I want to continue to do that to better Brockton, work with you, and work for you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next would be Nicholas Fernandez. Good evening again. Um, my three priorities will always remain the same. Um, they will be the youth, the downtown area in Brockton, and our infrastructure. To delve a little bit deeper into those three points. Um, I would like to see 
a more robust uh, youth programs office in our mayor's office that will align and provide a vision for all the youth programs that exist in the city, as well as the, the nonprofits and, and organizations that are created by our citizens and our residents and our neighbors in the city. <clears throat> as far as downtown is concerned, uh, our downtown is the heart of our city and it needs to show that we care about our city. So the abandoned storefronts need to at least be facelifted and we need to put the button on our on the the property owners there to take care of their properties there. And as far as infrastructure go, that not only um, concerns the street lights, the streets, and the sidewalks and cityscapes, but also how we interact with our residents on the, on the internet and and create a more robust website, but also change how we interact Time. with our citizens in Brockton. Okay. Um, next, we Gary Keith, please. My three-point plan basically would be, first of all, to increase our tax base um, by bringing in new businesses that would create more jobs, that would actually create revenue to where, and number two, that would actually support us in our public safety area as far as hiring more police officers. The third point, part of my three-point plan is actually for the youth. They need mentoring programs, they need job training programs, they need anything that's going to keep them busy and, and active. And what happens at this point here is that I'm sure that we could find some good quality teachers at Brockton High School, all the surrounding schools here in Brockton, that would uh, donate their time, okay? They have a passion for what they do as far as teaching. I think that if they saw uh, the youth basically wanting to learn, I think that they would donate their time and actually give their resources and stuff to actually helping them in that area of job training and just a mentoring program. And um, that's my three-point plan. Perfect, right on time. Okay, so I need to go to Paul Beckner. My biggest issue is the tax rate. Raising taxes is the basis for everything going wrong in this city. Over and over and over again, year after year, we're raising taxes on businesses and residents. We're creating more poor people, which in turn, you need more affordable housing, which in turn make people pissed off and they create violent acts, okay? We're never going to stem the tide of this unless we stop raising taxes. We're making bad decisions, okay? And one of them was the desal plant. Nice to have this desal plant backing up our water source, but we haven't used a drop of it, and we're draining $6.2 million a year into it, okay? That could put 50 policemen on the streets, but we've got to stop raising taxes. I pledge as long as I'm in office, I will never vote for a tax increase and never vote to pass a budget that has one. Thank you. Um, Craig Pina. My three points would be uh, public safety, business development, and property tax relief. Like other candidates, I know we, we, uh, we, we know that the, the property owners and residential property owners are crying for tax relief. The only way to provide that is to increase our public safety and business development. We need to open the city for business. We need to in improve our antiquated processes. Why is it that I can, I can, go, I can go on my smartphone on the, for the town of Marshfield and apply for my permits and inspections online? I could do, I could do it right from this room, right from, right from my seat. Why is it that it takes three days to get permits in the town of Abington that in the, in the city of Brockton takes nine months? We need to get everybody pulling in the same direction. I've talked to so many business owners and developments who aren't investing in the city because biz, uh, Brockton is so difficult to do business with. Until we increase our revenues from the commercial tax base, we won't be able to increase public safety for the long term and give property tax relief. Thank you. And Jay Stewart. Uh, thanks again. I actually uh, am focused on a five-point plan, jobs, education, safety, quality of life. But the number one item on that list is accountability, which I think actually influences all the other issues that we confront as a city. If we have the best qualified, the most talented, uh, the most visionary uh, leadership in the city, whether these are elected officials, but more importantly, the appointed officials, I think we'll start to see a big change in the city. You know, so for example, uh, when I joined the city council two terms ago, uh, department heads would come before us, uh, appointed um, by the mayor with approval for the city council. The city council was approving these appointments without even a resume. Could you imagine going to get a job without even having to present a resume? 
uh, there was only two other counselors on the committee that voted in favor of this change of, of the ordinance, uh, and those counselors are not here today. Um, but, but the point is to make certain that we have uh, at, at our top leadership uh, the best qualified people who are connected to the best practices out in the field and can make the best decisions. Thank you. Okay, next question, uh, Ron. As a counselor at large, you're voted in, uh, into office to expressly represent the people. Or did the people vote for you because of your views? Upon which theory do you perform? Is it a mix? And if so, what percentage? Okay, and the first one up to answer that question is Nick Fernandez. I'm sorry, could you just repeat the question? Sure. <laughs> I needed to hear that again. Well, you're voted into office uh, by the people because you express your views and they agree with your views, or you voted into office uh, because you're there to, express, to, to represent the people purely. If it's a little bit of both, how much of both? Um, I definitely want to be a voice of the people, and, and that's part of the reason why I, I entered this race. Um, and I think my views reflect what the people want already. Um, and I will tend to side with what the people want in this community. And I, I hope to achieve that by um, having more of these city council uh, ward meetings, but also have them regularly and have them posted that everyone knows when these meetings are happening, more community meetings, so we can um, start to, to ra raise up the concerns of our citizens so, th so that we as a city council and we as a city hall know what's affecting our community and that the community feels that they have a voice. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Robert Sullivan. You know, I grew up here in the city of Brockton. Uh, my dad was a teacher at Brockton High, my mom was a nurse. Uh, we had a great moral compass. Uh, and, and I really think the two most important things is your reputation, your integrity, and of course your family. That's really important to me. Uh, when I knock on your door, uh, seven wards, 28 precincts, and I ask for your vote, I'm asking for your vote of confidence to serve you, to be a public servant. Not to just say I'm a counselor at large or a politician. That's not why I'm in the race and why I've been reelected. You stand on your principles, you do the right thing at all times, you don't ever, ever uh, cater. And, uh, and I've been very vocal on the city council, and uh, my colleague, Mr. Stork, can concur with that. I think the, uh, the art of uh, diplomacy is the art of compromise, and I've done that, but I also have always done it for the right reasons. Uh, when I knock on someone's door and they favor the power plant and I, uh, I uh, oppose it, uh, we can agree to disagree on that. But you always have to serve for the right reasons, and I'm seeking your re-election to continue what I've done in the city of Brockton because we can do better here in the city of Brockton, not just for us, but for our children. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next would be uh, Jim Daly. Uh, actually, it's a mix of both. Uh, obviously, they don't know how I'm going to serve until I serve, and they're going to hear my views and uh, think that perhaps I should uh, have a chance to serve. But that's exactly what we're doing, is we're serving. We're serving at the will of the people. If we're not doing the will of the people, we're not doing our job. Whether my point of view is opposite what the people want, I'm there to represent the people, and I have to vote what the people want. Thank you. Uh, next would be Shana Barnes. Uh, like my brother said, I, I do believe it is a mixed bag. Um, but I think it's probably 60-40 views to representation. Um, I, my decision to enter this race, actually, I, I, I did ponder. As a resident of Brockton, I don't think the things that I want to have happen here are that unique from anyone else uh, living in breathing and educating their children and, and paying their taxes here in the city. Um, so I think that my views will identify with the residents of the city, with the changing demographic. Um, and I also think that, and I agree too with Mr. Daly, that um, no one will really know how we will be as leaders until you vote um, for me. So when you do that, you'll be able to see that I'll be able to represent you fully, confidently, and um, effectively. Thank you. Thank you, Shana. Uh, next would be Gary Keith. Again, I agree with uh, what they've said already. I think it's a mixed bag. However, I think a lot of people, there's some people that would actually believe in the views that I have, but I believe that the people in general see my passion for this city and knowing that I would give everything I have on the issue, no matter what it is. So I'm going to represent the people in any manner possible. It's not going to be what I want. It's going to be what the people want. And I think that servanthood is when you can humble yourself and do what you have to do despite 
what you feel, okay? We're here to serve the city of Brockton, and I think that the better of the people, what's best for the city is what I would do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next would be uh, Jay Stewart. Uh, very good question. I think it's a, a mixture. I'm not certain you can put a percentage on the whole package. I think it depends really on the issue. Um, for the power plant, for example, I was the first to oppose it. Uh, I would look behind me and there was not a, a single other elected official in opposition. It took some time really to build the momentum. In part, I think some folks were wait, waiting to see where the wind was blowing. Um, I made that decision uh, very early because I felt it was the right thing to do, not knowing what the residents would feel about that issue. And it, it happened to be that I believe most people um, agree with that decision. So, um, but just the opposite, with the negotiation with the unions, I was the first elected official in that meeting that said, I'm not going to support forcing um, employees into the GIC and that, that the city and the union should go back, sit down and negotiate. I got a lot of heat for that uh, as a city councilor and people were saying they wouldn't vote for me. It turned out to be the right decision. We saved the city millions upon millions of dollars um, with that vote. Um, so I think sometimes people agree with your decision, sometimes they do not. Thank, thank you. Um, next would be Jacob Tanner. I am a representative of the people. I am the people. Uh, one thing I would definitely say is I'm not a career politician. I'm a career Brocktonian. I've been told several times you're new to politics. And that's, that's wonderful. To, you know, it's great. It's new. Uh, I'm, not, I'm a veteran of Brockton. Um, I am an accurate representation of what Brockton is. I'm not here to, uh, it's no, there's no hidden aspirations here. I'm not here to be a career politician. I'm here to be a good person. Um, I am a representative of the people. Um, there's no show with me. What you see is what you get. If you can't see the type of person I am, um, I'm, not, I, I'm just not here to put on a show. I definitely feel I'm a representative of the people, and whatever the people want is what I, what I am going to vote for. Um, that's, it, like I said, it is what you, I am what, you, what you're going to get. What you see is what you're going to get. Right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next would be Anthony Donegan. I agree with Chase. That was a really cool question. Uh, it's unfortunate that we only have a minute to answer it. Um, clearly, I, what I would do is the will of the people. Where it becomes difficult is when it, the will of the people is unclear. Um, there are issues that arise that you hear from your constituents. Uh, but you don't necessarily know that that's what everyone wants. So that's where I think, as Robert said, you, you have to have principles, you have to have a moral compass, if you will. Um, I like to think that my, my career, my upbringing, my career as a lawyer has helped me to make those kinds of difficult decisions when it's not always clear. Um, so my, my choice would always be to do the will of the people, but when that's not clear, I, I would do what I believe is right. Thank you. Uh, next would be Craig Pina. I think it's a combination of both. Uh, people, I, I ask people to, to vote for me because they believe in the, my principles. Uh, we, we all have, every, every one of us sitting here has a set of values and principles. And ultimately, every decision we make is going to be guided by those. Uh, there, there will be times that uh, the, 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 the people will, will say overwhelmingly what they want. But when it goes against your principles, that's something you just, you just can't abide. You have, you have to make what's the, the right decision that you feel inside. So uh, it, it, is, it is a mixed bag. It's a 50-50 mix. But ultimately, people are voting for I, I ask people to vote for me because of my principles, and they believe that I'm going to do the right thing. Thank you. Uh, next would be Paul Beckner. My views are my views. Your views are your views. Uh, we can always agree or disagree. That's what debate is all about. I want to ask you, though, about views. Uh, who gets asked about their view except at election time? I mean, are people out there asking what your views are on this, on that, before they vote on them? That's what we have to do. We need community involvement. We need to vote or at least stay engaged with one another and perhaps have a vote on this or that in some way, whether it be through the internet. But we have to come up with different ways to stay engaged with one another because we're never always going to agree 
on every aspect of, of, uh, of the issues out there. Thank you. Uh, next would be Ed Miller. As you're driving around the city, you're starting to see elect this person sign. It's that time of year again. Everybody, elect me for this, elect me for that. But you see one sign that is different. It says, hire me. Because when you hire me, you're, I'm, you're my employer. I'm going to be working for you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to vote what the majority wants. And I'm hoping that my views are shared by your views. We all say we're law and order. Well, there's 14 people here who are law and order. There's not one who's uh, chaos and disorder. We all want to see law and order. I put in Facebook over a month ago that I will have a meeting at least once every other month, which we really haven't seen uh, except for a few counselors. But I promise that we will have a meeting every other month where you can come down and we can talk about uh, the current events that are happening in our city and what we need. Because I'm your employee. Your vote is hiring me. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Um, next, we have uh, Patrick Quinn. Thanks. Your question somewhere falls down on the foundation of democracy. It really does. It's really about liberty, personal liberty, private liberty, and public liberty. And uh, as an elected official, you have to definitely follow the will of the people. But can you imagine if those elected officials 50 years ago followed the will of the people down in the Deep South? We'd probably still have segregation today. So it depends on the times and the issues. When you, as an elected official, either follow what the, what the will of the people want, or you actually give direction to the will of the people. And I saw that happen in New York City when I was working in New York City with Giuliani. The city was a mess. The will of the people was everywhere. But he and those people, those government officials, directed liberties of people to be a better city. And so I think it depends on the issue at hand and the time. But absolutely, you serve the people. And at the same, same time, you need to lead the people as well. People want leadership. That's what we need in the city of Brockton. Thanks. Thank you. Next would be Don Carr. Thank you. As a city council at large, you are elected by the people, you work for the people, and you represent the people of the city of Brockton 100%. If you can't represent your constituents 100%, you have no reason being in the race. We're here to serve the people. They elected us, and that's what we do. Thank you. And uh, lastly, for this question, and this will be the last question, Steve Foote. The city of Brockton has a mayor and a city council. We have 94,000 people approximately living here in Brockton. The odds of trying to find out what 94,000 people think at any one given time are slim to none, if, if at all possible. The trick is to have fo the folks at home, the voters, look at all of us and decide which ones are the best uh, to represent their interests. I've lived here for 54 years my entire life. I've gone to school here. I'm a homeowner here. I know what's going on around here. I don't need to have a laptop in front of me or some device to tell me what's going on. I'm not a city council right now, but I get stopped on the street all the time. People see me on democratically speaking. They stop me on the street and ask me questions constantly. I have a good feel for what the vibe of the people think, and I'll go with that, and I'll uh, be an advocate for all the citizens, and we'll work as best we can as well as we can. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And now uh, we are at the end. We have uh, time for closing statements. Um, I will do my best to do the best job possible. And um, the only thing I'm not sure of at this point is how to uh, up, there we go, change it to two minutes for a closing. So we're going to start with uh, Ed Miller, who drew uh, number one closing statement. Well, <clears throat> thank you for uh, having me here tonight. Uh, I'm glad you allowed me into your living room. We've all discussed in what we're running for. I could repeat it again and again and again. What we need is people on the, on the council who are going to represent you. I'm asking you again to hire me because I'm there to work for you. We need changes in Brockton. The first one, and I'll keep on saying it, and when I come to your door, I say the same thing. We need to increase the revenue. By increasing the revenue, we have to inc increase the businesses by com coming in here. 
that means we need a person and a group to do that who work for the city. We need them to come in, bring in good businesses, but we need businesses that are going to ha ha pay a livable wage. We can have all the eight dollar an hour jobs that we want. The problem is they're not, people aren't going to be able to save to, to buy a house, they're not going to become homeowners, they're going to work two, three jobs, and, and yeah, everybody likes to work 80 hours a week. No one likes that. We need a 40 hours a week where they can spend time with their family, buy the home, increase the revenue. When revenue increases, taxes go down for the rest of us. Then we can hire the police department, the fire department. I'm a, tr I'm a trustee on the board of, uh, uh, at the library. We need more money for the library. How do we get that? Increase the revenue for the fire department, for the park and recreation. But it all starts with A, and A is hiring a city planner and getting them and getting the revenue we need in this city. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Okay, next would be uh, Jacob Tagger. Thank you again for having me here today. I am honored to be a part of this race. Um, a good friend of mine told me that change is coming, but I couldn't agree with him more. Change was born in Brockton on May 26, 1976. Change rode his big wheel in the Richmond Street projects where he grew up until the street lights came on and his mom told him to come in the house. Change won the eighth grade citywide spelling bee at the Little Red Schoolhouse while he was a student at South Junior High. Change was voted by his peers at Brockton High School most likely to, most likely to succeed and graduated from Brockton High School in 1995. Change has lived in Brockton for 37 years, and he calls Brockton his home. He loves his city, his family, his friends, and his coworkers who all live here. My name is Jacob L. Tiger Jr. I am running for city councilor at large, and I am the change you have been waiting for, and I am the change that we need. On September 17th, vote for change, vote for Brockton. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next would be uh, Jim Daly. Um, I hope to uh, have your vote on September 17th. Um, some of the things that I've done in the city of Brockton is I worked with the Brockton Interfaith Community. I served on my church council. I'm currently serving on the church council again. I worked with PTAs, community schools. I served eight years on the school committee. I did eight budgets, hired two superintendents. Um, I enjoyed that very much. I do enjoy committee work. It was great when the money was coming in and, and the scores were going up. It was tough when we were faced with a $19 million deficit one year we had to cut. Municipal finances are diff difficult for some people to understand. State funds, federal funds, city funds, grant funds, cobbling them together to get a budget that's workable so you can you have to lay off the least amount of people when that comes. Those are horrible decisions to make. You're, you're putting a family out of work when you're laying somebody off. You have to make those decisions. I don't like making those decisions. I'm willing to do that if it comes to it. I have experience. I have abilities. I am a good problem solver. And I do love the city. I came to the city. I wasn't born here. I was born in Boston. Grew up in Dorchester and Mattapan. I lived in Quincy for several years. I worked as a retail clerk. I worked at State Street Bank. I worked as one of those horrible people that sent out those credit card bills. I, I did lots of different jobs. I am currently uh, an appointee by the governor to the Rehab Council for the Commission for the Blind, and I serve as a regional, Region 5 uh, chairman for the Commission for the Blind. I still serve as uh, second vice president National Federation of the Blind. Yes, I'm blind, but I function full in this society. I own a home. My daughter went to school through the system. Time. And I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next up would be Tony Donegan. Thank you again. Uh, thank you to, to the folks at Brockton Cable, and thank you for all, all for uh, tuning in. Um, as you know, I'm a Ward 3 school committee man, and I had an opportunity to stay on the school committee. I could have run unopposed, um, 
but I felt that I had done my service on the school committee and that I could do a good job on the, uh, as a city councilor at large. Um, this is I, nothing that I want to rest on my laurels. We balanced two budgets. We had, a, a, uh, for a time, a dysfunctional situation between the school committee and the superintendent. And we were fortunate enough to be able to hire a new superintendent who I believe is going to do an excellent job in that capacity. And I felt that it was best for me to move on. Um, I view myself as a public servant. I am not in this for any accolades. Um, I am in it because I love Brockton. I love my family, and I want to stay here, and I want to make it a better place to live. I hope that you'll give me that opportunity. On September 17th, we have a preliminary election. Again, I'm last but not least on your ballot, number 15, Anthony Donegan, Jr., and I am asking for one of your votes for councilor at large. Um, again, I, I won't go through the, the, the three points that we've all hammered home this evening. We all know them well. I think that I'm the, one of the, your best four candidates to advance those three matters through the city council, to work with our state delegation, to work with our federal delegation, and most importantly, to work with the people of Brockton to make it a better place to live. So again, I ask for your vote, and thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Craig Pina. We've had some great ideas presented tonight. Over the course of the campaign, every, it, it's great to have 15 <coughs> candidates. We get a lot of great ideas. Uh, we, 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 we rehash these ideas, a lot of them tonight. And so right now, what I want to do is tell you a little bit about myself. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I've, I've, I've grown up in the city of Brockton. I grew up in Ward 6. Uh, a lot of people ask me out on the campaign trail uh, if, if I'm related to the guy that used to run Brookfield Little League or umpired baseball games all over the city, yes. Uh, in the 70s and 80s, my father ran Brookfield Little League. So I, it, most families from Court Street North to the, to the, to the Holbrook Line, from, from, uh, from Montella Street West to the, to the Avon Line, everyone knew who my father was, uh, along, with, along with some great people like Lois and Paul Wagorn. They ran a, a, fantastic, a fantastic league, and we, 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 we had a, a real pulse of the city back then. Uh, I, that really gave me a foundation, seeing my family volunteer so much of their time to, I became a 25-year-old president of the Qantas Club where I started a Bring Up Grades program where we, reward, we, where we, in six schools, we rewarded kids for bringing up their grades. All the way to, I spent seven years working with Special Olympics Massachusetts where we created a first of its kind program that became a model for other programs around the country. Uh, using innovative ways and collaborations between city government, school systems, and businesses. I can build collaborations uh, to, to uh, the, the, the present day where I've, where I've spent a lot of time working with the Chamber of Commerce and other youth programs. Uh, I'm, I've, I'm committed to the city, and like I said, I don't, I don't know if there's anybody over a two-decade span who spent more time working for the youth of the city and the business community of the city. I'm Craig Pina, and I'm first on the ballot. I ask for your vote on September 17th. Thank you. Uh, next up is Jay Stewart. Great. Thanks to uh, BCA again and uh, WXPR for hosting this and for your uh, taking the time to watch. Uh, Jay Stewart on the City Council seeking re-election and hoping to count on your vote on September 17th. Uh, Henry Ford said that you can't build a reputation on what you're going to do, but on what you've accomplished. So let me just run down uh, some of the things that I've accomplished and I'm very proud of as a city councilor in just two terms. And I encourage you to visit my website, www.jassstewart.com, to learn more about my priorities uh, and my successes on the city council. As I mentioned earlier, I was the first to oppose the power plant uh, well before uh, it was clearer um, uh, to many what a bad decision this would be for the city. And I remain committed uh, to my position and have voted for every single funding appropriation to ensure that the city is well represented legally. Um, I took on nepotism in the city, which was a year and a half long project. We have for the first time ever uh, an anti-nepotism policy in Brockton to ensure that every single resident has a fair shot uh, at a city job because frankly, you deserve an income to take care of your family as well and we have to make certain those resources aren't hoarded by a small group of people. Um, I stood up for DJ Henry, uh, the Eastern resident whose grandparents live in Brockton, who was sh uh, shot and killed in New York City, uh, because I felt elected officials too often shy away from those controversial um, you know, political uh, issues. And I felt like uh, we had a family here in Brockton who was um, uh, in need of support from the elected officials. And I took on that task, uh, got beat up by it, but felt it was the right thing to do and very proud of taking that stance. 
uh, I was the city councilor who led the way for us to divest over $170 million of your taxpayer dollars out of the big banks and reinvest that money into local banks. So now responsible lenders are able to lend more to residents and businesses and frankly hire more local residents. Um, I took two trips to Cape Verde. Uh, we have a large Cape Verdean population. Sometime it's Time. neglected to ensure that we um, build the economy here locally. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next would be Patrick Quinn. I want to thank uh, Cable Access and WXBR for holding this uh, debate with such little notice. But uh, let's see. I serve you already as one of, one of five volunteer water commissioners and the one water commissioner who is telling the truth and only the truth during the water meter debacle. I am a lifelong resident of 40 years this past May. I am a product of the public school system, having attended the Raymond Elementary, North Junior High, and graduating from Brockton High School, class of 1991. I then pursued a career in filmmaking, working on television shows such as The Sopranos and The Good Wife, in movies such as Beautiful Mind, The Town and The Departed. I soon found myself surrounded with the top filmmakers, and I learned amazing things are accomplished when we strive for excellence. And that is why I am running to be your city councilor. Brockton is more than an amazing place. It is a place where champions are born and champions take responsibility. There's a growing attitude that is suffocating the economics of this city, which in turn minimizes the quality of life for all citizens. These are clear -cut, there are clear-cut solutions that have been proven because they worked in places like Quincy, Lowell, New Bedford, and many other cities across the country. The tone of how we do business is setting the standard for Brockton. Everyday tasks that make our city turn are being labeled as problems, and truths are yet to be fully exposed. As your city councilor, I will not stop I will not waver until we remove this attitude. For it is time for the city to adjust its course. I want to help steady this rocking boat. I want to ensure our direction works for all Brocktonians. I have laser-like focus, ruthlessly practical, and have many positive constructive ideas for the job. I ask for your vote on election day. Remember, we all win with a vote for Patrick Quinn. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, next will be Paul Beckner. In closing, I'd like to thank all who participated tonight. I'd like to thank Mark and uh, Ron. <laughs> Ron for creating this venue. <laughs> My wife Pam and I grew up in the same neighborhood, Brookfield. We have lived here most of our lives. Our family members all went through Brockton schools. Our neighborhoods were tough. We fought with our fists, not in a cowardly way, with guns and knives. My ancestors stretched back to the 1800s in Brockton. I think Brockton people are basically good people counselors and all. It's just that we have lost our bearings, like Rocky Marciano in his first title fight against Jersey Joe Walcott. We've been getting pounded time and again for at least 12 years now by rising and senseless violence, soaring tax rates, bad decisions and investments by those who practice, of course, Mohica. It's the, 12, it's the 13th round, folks. It's time for that mighty right to the chin, the knockout punch that will make us champions again. Cape Verdeans, Europeans, Haitians, and all nationalities. Rocky would be ashamed if we let Bohicanism thrive in Brockton. Let's make him proud. It's time we started listening to some new music, folks. But well, the only tune we will be singing is Hippity Hop to the Poverty Shop. Tell all your friends and foes alike that they need to rise up now. Let's end the lawlessness. Let's stop the march to poverty. Let's begin the journey together. Godspeed, Brockton. Godspeed. As Thomas Jefferson said, in matters of style, swim with the current. In matters of principle, stand like a rock. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, next up would be Shana Barnes. Thank you again for hosting uh, this debate, and thank you to my brothers and my sister for attending and giving your views. Um, as I stated before, my name is Shana Barnes. I am number three on your ballot September 17th. I encourage you to get involved in this election. As you can see, there are more than 40 people, I think, in all of the um, offices that are open, from mayor to school committee. And I just encourage you, as a Brockton resident, to have your voice. Please make that vote. Vote Shana Barnes, number three. Now, uh, personally, like I said before, 
I think that the way that the city is changing, we also need to have change in our leadership. And as I mentioned before, I am the most diverse uh, candidate here. And I think that I am more a little bit intact uh, to what is going on in the community because um, of my u uniqueness to this race. Um, we are 65 to almost 70 percent um, minority here in the community of Brockton. And I think that the representation um, needs to be there. In addition to that, I also feel that I have a wonderful working um, and personal relationship with the um, with every resident, or with most residents in the city of Brockton. Um, my current position allows me to be involved in city politics. I have been to the uh, city council meetings. I have been involved in task forces, in um, forums, in uh, board meetings and things that, that with the issues that are going on in this city. So I do have a knowledge base coming into this position of what we need to do. And I really feel that I have the resources available to me to be able to impart that into the current council. Um, my goal is to come into the council and to work with them and to give them, like I said, some new and some fresh perspectives on how to deal with things that may be stalled. Um, and I feel that I, I am the only candidate that can do that for you. Again, Shana Barnes, please visit my website if you'd like to see more information with Shana Barnes, S-H-A-Y-N-A-H-B-A-R-N-E-S dot com. Number three. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, next would be Steve Foote. I've already told you folks tonight that uh, I've lived in Brockton for 54 years. I believe that's longer than anybody here on this panel. I've also served, uh, I've also uh, served as the Democratic City Committee Chairman. I've been elected three different times to that position. And I've gone to school here in Brockton from the Brookfield School, Dwarf Junior High, Brockton High Class of 74, Massasoit Community College, and I even took some of my classes from Northeastern University at Massasoit. Let me touch on a couple of issues right now that we didn't get a chance to talk about. Nepotism, which is the uh, hiring and giving special favors to family and friends. I have never worked in the city of Brockton or for the state. None of my family members have ever worked for the city or the state. I will not have to recuse myself from any votes because of nepotism. One other thing, too, is when you folks watch Brockton Community Access and you see the meetings on Monday nights, you can sometimes walk away saying, wow, what, what, what happened there? Well, what I'm going to do is if I'm elected, I'm going to run a show once a week on Thursday nights called City Council This Week. And I'm going to explore, come on and explain to you what happened that week during the City Council meeting. We're also going to take questions from the folks and we're going to take them off the Internet. And so you'll have a chance to ask me directly that week, right after it happens, what went on and why it happened. What we're going to try to do also is I have a plan for, to work with our state delegation to uh, improve conditions for our veterans. I have a uh, disabled brother, Gregory, who I've been taking care of for the last 33 years. I know the problems disabled people go through. I know the problems senior citizens go through because my, both of my parents, I was taking care of them until they died just recently. On September 17th, I'm asking you, vote for leadership, education, and experience. That candidate is me. My name is Steve Foote. And I hope you'll vote for me on, save one of your four votes for me on September 17th. Check my website, www.stephenfoot.com, for more information and all my positions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is Don Carr. My name is Don Carr, and as your next city councilor at large, I will be dedicated, resourceful, innovative, and trustworthy because that's how I live my life day to day. I've raised three children in this city, ages 23, 20, and 17. My oldest is a recent graduate from Bridgewater State University. My daughter has studied architecture at Wentworth. My youngest is, will be, is a senior this year at Brockton High School, and he will be entering the Marines next year. They've all received scholarships, and as they were growing up, I was hands-on in their school system, in the community, volunteering, chairing events, fundraising for school supplies, uh, helping to bring in money and, and resources that weren't available while they were in school because of, of economic times and so on and so forth. But anyways, as they grew up, I branched out more from the school level onto the city level and working at the radio station and helping volunteer at events in the city, I helped to make the city a better place. And I will continue to do that as your next city councilor. One of the things that uh, recently I've been facilitating um, is uh, Bootsy Barbecue Sauce. They're bringing a factory into the city and I worked as a liaison bringing them in. They are uh, buying a factory in the south side. And to me, that's great economic growth without a 350-foot smokestack to prove for it. Um, as your next city councilor, 
I will bring this hard work and determination. I'm uh, very high energy. I am number 11 on the ballot on September 17th. So please remember, Don Carr, September 17th. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Um, next up is uh, Gary Keith. Again, thank you for having us here tonight. And um, I'd like to just talk a little bit about myself. Again, I'm Gary Keith. I would like to be your next city councilor at large for the city of Brockton. I'm married 27 years, 25 year resident here in Brockton. My wife and I have seven beautiful children ranging from 29 to 14. That's two girls and five boys. I am a US veteran of the Army, honorably discharged in 1980. I have an, um, an associate's degree in administration of justice. I actually serve, I've been serving since 19, ooh, 1990 at Jubilee Church as a um, gatekeeper and now as an armor bearer. Those that don't know what an armor bearer is, basically it's like security to the bishop. Um, servanthood is what I do. Servanthood is what these gentlemen are all trying to do. We're trying to serve you. I would love to be your next city councilor because I do know how to serve. I know how to give more for you than I do for myself. But I want to give it for my family because as a resident here at Brockton, as a father, I know what it takes day in and day out to make ends meet, to uh, show the love that you need to do, plus hold down a job. I work full time on the south side of Brockton at the Santa Chevrolet. It's a, a full time job. At the same time, I have to juggle my family life, which is more important to me than anything else. But I'm here in the city of Brockton because violence did hit my family. And we decided that we were getting ready to move out of here. And, but I know that this is home to my family and it's home to me. So nothing else would do And the place we were going was to New York, but I can never see putting a New York plate on the back of my car. Uh, so with that, I have a passion to serve you. So I ask for your vote on September 17th and I ask you to vote number 10 on the ballot. I'm Gary Keith, Sr., City Councilor at Lodge. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Uh, next is uh, Robert Sullivan. I want to thank uh, Ron and Mark, uh, and I want to take this opportunity to remind all registered uh, voters, if you're a Democrat, Republican, unenrolled, independent, please get out there, do your civic duty, and vote in the preliminary on September 17th. I'm asking for your vote of confidence again, once, once again, as I seek re-election to the council as a councilor at large serving the entire city of Brockton. My name is Robert Sullivan, born and raised here in the city of Brockton, graduate of Brockton High School 1988, married my high school prom date, Maria Louise. I grew up in Ward 2, and we're raising our three children ages 6, 3, and 1 in Ward 1. I went on to Boston College. I have an undergraduate degree and an MBA from BC, and I have a law degree from New England School of Law. But more importantly, I proudly come before you again asking for your vote because I enjoy serving you. That's what it's about. It's serving you, making Brockton a great place. We all know it's a great place. My grandparents came from Ireland to work in the shoe factories because Brockton back then was a, the land of opportunity. It is still the land of opportunity. We have great, dedicated people. Everybody up here is, is, is running for office because they think they can better Brockton. I have bettered Brockton. I have done that, and I continue to do that. I've always gone to bat for the seniors, uh, the senior citizens and the retirees, the most vulnerable in the community. When one of the mayors wanted to increase premiums for their health insurance, I said, that's not right. They're on fixed incomes. They don't have anybody at the union table to negotiate. Don't do it. And my colleagues on the council supported that. I also have a pending ordinance where uh, senior citizens and veterans can volunteer time here in the city of Brockton. As a result of volunteering time, they're going to get a price reduction in their real estate taxes. That's what it's about, thinking outside the box but being an advocate, not being a politician, serving you. So I'm asking you to please go to the polls in the preliminary on September 17th and again, November 5th in the general election. My name is Robert Sullivan. I want to continue to serve and work with you and work for you. Again, Robert Sullivan, number seven on the ballot. I'm gonna, not going to let you down. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. And uh, last but not least, uh, Nicholas Fernandez. Good evening. Thank you, Mark and Ron and BCA and WXBR for hosting this event. And thank you to the candidates uh, for, for having a lively debate. Um, my name is Nicholas Fernandez. I am number eight. I'm right in the middle. Um, on the ballot and I'm asking for your vote. I want to bring first and foremost honesty and integrity to, to the city council position. Um, those are two great values that were instilled in me by my family and my upbringing and I hope to continue to do that as a city councilman. Uh, my, my main focus is on the youth. I want to see a youth programs office in our, in our mayor's office that can help align a lot of the programs that already exist 
and some of the nonprofits and some of the community organizations that are set up by our residents here and give them a vision and guiding principles that will help them not only secure grant money, but help uh, bring more focus and light onto the good things that are happening in Brockton and help our youth um, succeed and realize their dreams. I would like to see our downtown area revitalized to the point where that becomes our heart and our bread and butter in the city and we become proud and show others that we're proud to be Brocktonians and we take care of our downtown. And that, in part, um, calls for us being sh uh, stronger on our property owners who are not um, uptaking and, and upkeeping the buildings that are there. And we need to see a better facelift and, and, and more pride through our downtown area. I would like to see our infrastructure improve and that includes streets, lights, sidewalks, uh, parks and even trash cans to the point where we can um, where we can see our city beautified but most importantly I want to see City Hall become welcoming for all of our residents young and old uh, natural born and, and naturalized and and immigrant and, and born here because our City Hall needs to be a place where everyone can come and be proud and I'm asking for your vote on September 17th thank you Thank you, and uh, I would like to thank everybody here for taking the time out. Uh, first of all, for putting yourself forward and uh, running for office and being on the ballot. I know firsthand what that means, what that means to your summer, what that means to your family, and you've all done wonderful public service. Um, any of you would be a fine addition to the City Council. I want to thank my colleague Ron Van Dam from WXBI Radio for co-hosting with this, us this tonight. I'm very happy that we're able to put the word out. Um, it was a challenge. Um, um, I have on my door upstairs a title that's called Air Traffic Controller. Tonight was the night that I got to use that without the flashlights. Um, did pretty good, one near miss, but we survived that. So I thank you all for being here. Uh, stay in your seats for a minute. We're going to roll credits and put the music in later on. There is no editing of this event. It is live to record. We used to call it live to tape. And uh, we will play it early and often. That's one of the benefits of cable. So thank you all. Thank you to my staff and crew. And uh, most of all, go out on September 17th and please vote. Make sure we have a much better turnout than we did two years ago. It was very sad. And if you want to be heard, get your voice out there. Thank you for joining us and have a good week.